Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sadler Science. Today we are going to explore the practice of analyzing and interpreting data. We will be using Google presentations in order to annotate graphs. Analyzing and interpreting data is one of the science and engineering practices, and I love using this method to annotate graphs because we can make as many annotations as we want without wasting any paper. In a previous video, I showed your students how to create graphs using Google Sheets. If you haven't already, make sure you check out that video. Let's start by talking about what graph annotations are. If you have ever reviewed a piece of informational text, especially if it was on the more challenging side, you likely annotated the text. You likely took notes in the margins or highlighted the text in order to make the information more accessible to you. Graph annotations are basically taking the same idea and using it to make sense of graphs, especially the ones that might be a little bit more difficult to understand. I've taken the graph that we created in our last video and I've added it to a Google presentation. I can use the tools that are located up here in order to do my graph annotations. Some of my favorite are adding arrows, and text boxes in order to make the graph annotations. I can adjust the color of the arrows and the weight of the arrows in order to make them more visible. You can start by having students identify the independent and dependent variables. Google Presentations also allows students to rotate their text really easily. Identifying the independent and dependent variables on a graph are lower level skills that your students will likely pick up on really quickly. Not only should students talk about what they see, but they should also be discussing what this means. So if I have identified the independent variable as the month, the dependent variable is the number of mushrooms, but what does that mean when I put that data together? Students can say that the number of mushrooms varies per month, and they can give as much or as little detail as you would like them to. Students can annotate the graph to highlight specific pieces of data. You can also provide your students with some kind of a prompt. For example, right here I ask students what patterns they recognize. Patterns is one of the cross-cutting concepts. This helps make your activities three-dimensional. Students can respond in a wide variety of ways. For example, here, this student recognized that the highest number of mushrooms occurs in the winter and the lowest number of mushrooms occurs in the summer. Students can do more than just analyze and interpret their own data. You can provide them with complex data sets and have them do the same graph annotations. These are examples of annotations that might be made by students. You can provide them with prompts in order to get more detailed information. The possibilities are really endless using this strategy, and it's just up to you to decide how you want to use this. I hope this video has helped you to understand how digital graph annotations can be used for the practice of analyzing and interpreting data. Mm -hmm. 